Throughout America's story, there are defining days. Days when minds change, hearts fill, and imaginations soar. And liftoff of Artemis One. A new generation, the Artemis generation, stands ready. Ready to return humanity to the moon and then to take us further than ever before to Mars. In 2022, NASA successfully launched the Artemis I mission, marking a big step for U.S. space. And now Musk and Starship are at center stage in NASA's moon landing hopes. So is SpaceX working on the first lunar Starship 2023? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Last year, SpaceX shattered the record for launches with Falcon 9. The record launch cadence is planned to be broken again in 2023, with as many as 100 launches planned, according to Elon Musk. Starship is also currently on track for its first orbital test flight as early as the first quarter of 2023. Importantly, work continues on the Starship Lunar Lander for the Artemis program, and the first HLS demonstration flight will be uncrewed. Now to understand what the Starship flight will mean for Starship HLS progress, you should probably know about the basic difference between Starship HLS and a regular Starship. Well, the common features that both Starships have are the fully reusable spacecraft and the second stage of the Starship system, the same size of 50 meters in height and 9 meters wide, and both use the super heavy booster to propel into orbit. Starship has a stainless steel structure and tank construction. The Starship will also have a thermal protection system against the harsh conditions of atmospheric reentry. This would include hexagonal ceramic tiles that will be used on the windward side of the ship. The Starship HLS variant is being designed to stay on and around the moon. Therefore, both the heat shield and air brakes, integral parts of the main Starship design, are not included on Starship HLS as the vehicle will not return to Earth. The variant will use high-thrust oxygen and methane-fueled thrusters located mid-body on Starship HLS during the final tens of meters of the terminal lunar descent and landing to avoid plume impingement problems with the lunar regolith. SpaceX intends to use the same high-thrust RCS thrusters for liftoff from the lunar surface. Starship HLS is supplied with an electrical power by a band of solar panels around the circumference of the vehicle. Starship HLS requires an in-orbit propellant transfer in its mission profile. Prior to the launch of the HLS vehicle, a Starship propellant depot would be launched into low Earth orbit and refueled to capacity by several Starship flights carrying propellant. The Starship HLS vehicle would then launch and rendezvous with the already loaded propellant depot to expedite refueling operation before Starship HLS departs for the moon. Starship will use pressure-fed hot gas reaction control system thrusters using methane gas for altitude control. That includes the final pre-landing pitch-up maneuver from belly flop to tail down and for stability during high wind landings up to 60 kilometers per hour or 37 miles per hour. Initial prototypes have used nitrogen coal gas thrusters, which are substantially less mass efficient but are expedient to support early prototype flight testing. According to Musk, when Starship is used for Beyond Earth Orbit or BEO launches to Mars, the functioning of the overall expedition system will necessarily include propellant production on the Mars surface. This is necessary for the return trip and to reuse the spaceship to keep cost as low as possible. All this shows that the difference in the design of Starship HLS and regular Starship is trivial. Happily, SpaceX is ready for the first Starship orbital flight here in a few weeks. Pam Melroy, NASA's deputy administrator, said in a recent event, the company's making progress, but she didn't offer a timeline for when the orbital launch might come about. They've got the design ready to go do some serious hardware testing and they're beyond the we're going to probably blow up the pad phase, she said. As a former acting deputy associate administrator at the FAA, she said she knows how hard it is to develop a new location to launch rockets from. It's very challenging to set up a new location and I think they're just experiencing some of those things. In the interview, Nelson said he is constantly asking for updates on the company's progress and I am continuously told they're on schedule. They're meeting every milestone, and in some cases, they are exceeding their milestones, he said. 
And you know, look at SpaceX's history. They launch and sometimes they blow up, but in the end, they keep going. In August, Lisa Watson Morgan, manager of the HLS program, in a presentation at the annual meeting of NASA's Lunar Exploration Analysis Group, or LEAG, also said SpaceX has been a fantastic partner on HLS so far, with close cooperation between the company and the agency. SpaceX has been involved in the Artemis III landing site selection process to ensure potential landing regions are compatible with Starship. NASA, in turn, has its personnel, including astronauts, visiting SpaceX facilities for reviews and hardware tests. That includes one of the unique attributes of Starship, the elevator required to go from the crew cabin to the surface. It's a very tall lander. It doesn't look like the traditional landers that we've all seen in the past. So it can be hard to reconcile that mentally, Watson Morgan had said. She assured scientists at the meeting that the elevator design was robust, saying it was multi-fault tolerant and designed for operating in lunar condition. In his presentation, Kennedy showed images of a full-scale mock-up of the elevator that SpaceX built for the crew in the loop test, including ones where astronauts wore simulated spacesuits to test the ability to get in and out of the elevator. Some aspects of the overall Starship lunar landing architecture, though, remains unclear. The concept of operations for the lander involves SpaceX launching a Starship into low Earth orbit that would serve as a fuel depot, which is filled by subsequent Starship launches that serve as tankers. The lunar lander Starship will then launch, fill its tanks at the depot, then head to lunar orbit. Neither NASA nor SpaceX, though, have said exactly how many launches would be required for a single Starship lunar landing mission, an issue of contention during protest of the SpaceX HLS award last year by Blue Origin. How many, however many is needed, that is how many will launch, Watson Morgan said. Well, hopefully we'll get a specific number soon. On the other hand, NASA tapped SpaceX to provide a second crew demonstration landing on the moon as part of its Artemis Lunar Exploration Program, a huge win for SpaceX and a possible gesture at improving the relative lack of existing competition for such services. The second landing mission is for the Artemis IV, which is currently on the books for 2027. On top of securing NASA's Artemis IV astronauts a ride to the lunar surface, the additional contract, also known as the Option B contract, would also allow SpaceX and NASA to pursue and demonstrate upgrades that would make Starship an even more capable and cost-effective moon lander for the long term. The modification is likely to be embarked on in the coming months. We can't wait to see it. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.